Uh, thanks so much, uh, 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 Daisuke Ishida. And uh, this is the uh, pre-workshop inter uh, interview for uh, for your workshop that will happen um, yeah, next next week. Next week. Yeah. Yes. So um, uh, it's it's so great that uh, you are going to come to Aberdeen and give this workshop. That we are uh, we are very excited, and we have a, a set of questions that that we would like to, we would like to, uh, to ask you and which is related to you as a sound artist and uh, then also specifically about your workshop. So I will uh, hand it over to Caroline so that Caroline start uh, asking questions. Okay. Hi Jansuki, how are you doing? Hi. Uh, <laughs> Great. I'm going to start off just by um, asking if you could tell us a little bit more about your practice. So. As I understand it, as an artist, you're kind of sitting between, you know, the, the intersection of contemporary art practice and also sound experimentation. So I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit more about how those kind of different histories of art and sound influence your practice and where you are with it now, I guess. Yeah, cool. Um, thanks a lot for inviting me. I'm very excited to be there in a week, apparently. Um, yeah, so to answer that question... Uh, I originally started to do some sort of like started to use computer. I have no education in music, like a classical things. No, I have absolutely none. Mm -hmm. um, but just started to hook up with the uh, computer and started to do some weird stuff. That's my beginning, so to say. Um, so I kind of like started to be interested in art and sound or sound art or whatever. It's more like a later, slowly, gradually stepped into. So attitude wise, I'm almost the punk one, like the uh, punk attitude kind of thing. And then, um, yeah, so for me, I don't even, um, I don't mind what kind of field I do. Like, you know, as uh, Jun just said that I'm a sound artist, I don't even mind to be called as a sound artist, but um, I feel I feel very comfortable to be called just an artist because sound is just a medium that I that I like to use and I know a lot about it and I feel very comfortable. But so as lights and other medium as well. So um, yeah, it's it's I guess it's just that. Okay. Um, yeah. Do you, uh, uh, you, you mentioned that, uh, kind of, uh, I'll try to uh, follow up on that uh, answer. You said uh, you don't mind uh, to be uh, being called just an artist rather than sound artist. So does that mean you are also practicing uh, uh, the other disciplines, like, uh, you know, uh, as, a, say, visual artist? Mm -hmm. uh, so you are working with not only sound, but all other, other, other media, uh, that's what you're saying? More like incorporating with other different kind of corners, like I am a big fan of architecture, for example. Mm -hmm. and, um, but that interest came actually after, you know, the sound is all like listening. Listening is totally governed by the architectural surroundings. Mm -hmm. And then like the musicians or composers tend to not really care so much about the sound after it left from the loudspeaker or the, the instrument, sound object, sounding object whatsoever. Mm. So that's the beginning of like, yeah, architecture is really cool. That's actually governing, you know, governing everything. Mm. And then came to more like, you know, a, a lot of different like, sociology and stuff like that came in, political science as well. Mm -hmm. So it's more like uh, the practice as an artist, I probably, I'm very strong in music and sound, probably not music because I have no idea what that is, but um, more like expressing things, conceptual, uh, con developing a concept and bringing a consistency between practical work and a conceptual uh, theme. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And you, you did mention a, a little bit about um, thinking about kind of um, uh, institutional critique as, a, as another place that you might position your practice, is that right? Or, yes, yeah, absolutely. Right. So, um, so the workshop's called Sonic Interventions and it's um, beautifully framed by this kind of um, idea of kintsugi, 
which I'm probably yeah. pronouncing wrong, but the Japanese pottery technique of filling in the cracks with gold joinery. So could you tell us a little bit more about how you came to think about the workshop in this way, so the kind of conceptual underpinning? Yeah, yeah, for me it wasn't really easy to come up. I mean, nothing is easy to come up anyway, but um, for me it was a task to come up with a um, thematized project with students. Because I've been doing that Crack in the City project uh, for three years now, mm -hmm. maybe two years in a little bit. More, more and more, it's more like I wanted to have certain um, idea to hold everybody together. Like, like you know, like if you are doing just a project with like a random project, like a very vague theme with students and. Uh, and a discussion won't go further. Like we can, I thought that I uh, I needed to bring some sort of an anchor so that people can talk about something more like a, bringing a per, a lot of perspectives, but uh, more like having something that's tangible that we can talk about, like talk, right. talk on. Yeah, you said here the students are uh, is it uh, students at uh, University of Arts in Berlin? Indeed, yes. Yeah. Okay. Right. Uh, so then, and the the, the project is started uh, uh, as the uh, as Berlin as initial uh, initial city to, uh, to explore. Yes. So for me, it's uh, for the first time to do in um, different country in different city actually. So I'm very excited. Um, the crack in the city project. I mean, I am, as you, as Caroline was saying, that it's like the, uh, there's a quote from the Japanese culture thing. I am, I'm very much interested in almost everything, mm. like a lot of different kind of things, because like, I see those incidents or historical things, like um, the dots that I can really connect to. I mean, it, first of all, it looks like really random things, but somehow it makes sense if you draw a line like that, or like, you know, like play with, play around with those things and finding uh, interesting perspective and bring their projects. Mm -hmm. So the, uh, in your, uh, the, in your, uh, the, this pro project in the past uh, with your students, uh, what, uh, what were the, uh, the, the outcomes? Outcomes, uh, I don't define what the outcome should be, but um, it's not going to be so long because uh, A, that's a kind of an intervention. Even we do it in an institution like a museum or something, but it's more or less we consider ourselves as an alien, like mm -hmm. alien coming to a big house and they do something weird. Mm. So it should be not so long. It's not like three weeks, three months exhibition, but more like a one day intervention. Mm -hmm. um, I just did this like a winter semester um, show a week ago in a, in a, a project room and it was also one day exhibition. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, I just would like to follow up on that aspect of, uh, uh, because it's just not not only just me but also other uh, other potential uh, participants who will be quite interest, interested in uh, knowing uh, what you mean by intervention. Mm -hmm. Intervention is I mean literally something like coming in between or like coming on the way mm. or like twist the way of proper things. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much like a par parasite even. <laughs> or, mm. Yeah, I think that's hugely interesting um, for a lot of writing I'm doing on kind of uh, hospitality as well, and sort of the, the guest position in a foreign culture is sometimes mm -hmm. like a turning upside down of things. I don't know if that yeah. relates in a way, but when you also said an air, sort of an alien, <laughs> yeah. makes some kind of sense. Um, did you want to ask any? Yeah, no, it's not. Uh, yeah, we can go for the next one. Yeah, I suppose it sort of leads on, and you've maybe answered a little bit, but it's where what can we expect from the workshop as participants? So, can you give us some more insight into what what we will learn ahead of the workshop, or or what we'll do? Mm -hmm. Um, this workshop is going to provide, so to say, 
Um, I have always like two big criteria that are one is practical uh, skills to to uh, push it. Like you can have, I mean, pushing the boundaries are always the best. So you can have to try. Uh, get out of the comfort zone. If you are a musician, then why don't you try somehow to do some sort of installational things? And if you are more like a bit comfortable dealing with static things like sculpture, then why don't you do a performance? So it's like a personal challenges uh, within the format and everything, and as well as more. Um, the second is the uh, conceptual things, like a conceptual consistency. Because I find that this is a thematized workshop. Um, this I see that from my experience, some people are really uncomfortable dealing with this concept. Mm. And I would like them to understand it as a challenge. I mean, it's not like I'm threatening them. It's more like, you know, hey, this is what we are talking about, and this is what we'd like to do. And tell me what you think, and tell me what you want to do with it. Mm -hmm. And tell me what you would like to do with it. Mm -hmm. So the outcome should be free, like it can be performance. But performance can be true hours. You know, it's not actively performing all the time. Mm -hmm. More like a let it happen, and observing together. Or it's an installation, but somehow like it needs to be taken care of sometimes, some moments. It's still very much open. So in the in the in in, in a more uh, uh, practical term, and we have a uh, uh, the we have two days. Uh, the first day it it will start at ten thirty to three thirty, and the second day it be a bit shorter. You know, at ten thirty maybe to uh, one or something. Uh, and the uh, is because it's called the Sonic Intervention, and it, and the title is Cracks in the City. Uh, are we expecting to uh, go out in uh, in Aberdeen, a few places in local around the cities, and uh, is that how it's going to work, or is that uh, do we have any uh, more uh, rough idea of how the workshop will will be uh, will be running? Yeah, due to the limitation of the time, we have only two days. Mm -hmm. And usually, I mean, I, um, I've been doing this project, but it's for a semester long. Yeah. And it takes a long, long time. Mm -hmm. So I need to be practical a little bit, meaning that, you know, like I wrote that um, people need to bring their own expertise, mm -hmm. that people feel comfortable so that they can provide something already being comfortable with. Mm -hmm. Um, that's yeah, that's one thing, and uh, we would really like to go outside. Mm -hmm. And last time, Maya suggested uh, me that uh, there is a public uh, plaza or something right in mm -hmm. front of Peacock. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, that can be a really good point to start off. Mm -hmm. And uh, we can yeah we can discuss about this like a site specificity, mm -hmm. usually um, or like public art. Usually, when people talk about uh, public art or like public as a place for practicing arts. Mm -hmm. It's more, it's like um, deal, um, deal, it, deal it as a site or content. Mm -hmm. So just place to show, I mean, you know, the how to evaluate the site, it should be, you know, I would, I would really enjoy the diversity, how they think. And a content, you know, maybe you're going to bring a microphone and record it. That's all like take pictures and do the collage, or there are a lot of things. But basically, the two things like, you know, dealing as a site or content. Mm -hmm. So it's like a, there will be enough hints to work on that, or like how to accomplish it. And I would really like to encourage people to collaborate. Mm -hmm. I see. Right. The, uh, the, it looks like it's going to be a quite fascinating uh, workshop uh, for you know uh, the practicing artist. Right? We I'm sure we have um, we have uh, the the students and, and you know Emerson Sonic Art students who are comfortable with uh, working with the sound on their computer with the other type of technology, but also. Uh, uh, good, a uh, good number of artists from RGU who who have background in fine arts and visual arts practice, and they can also bring their uh, expertise. And so uh, it, it sounds like it's all, it's pretty much it's very collaborative and 
you know, the, the intense group, group project, isn't it? Yeah, I, yeah, I think you can say that. But also it's fine, like, you know, working alone and doing, mm -hmm. taking care of your own business, that's also fine. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, yeah, so I suppose another sort of practical question about um, on, on the website there's a list of the things that particip participants should bring, so laptops and materials like sounding objects. Um, um, so I suppose I wanted to ask what they can, apart from like what you bring, what you can do to prepare in advance mm -hmm. of the workshop to bring in. So, yeah. I think it's really important to like. Um, wandering around all the time. I mean, not wandering, meaning not you know walking around, but more like um, like thinking about that all the time, so to say. I mean, it's it's like a eyes open and observe the places, and that's the places uh, or like method that you can get ideas. Mm -hmm. And oh, that's a maybe great idea to interact with all those people on that particular path. Mm -hmm. Like in the street, or yeah, observation maybe. Mm -hmm. And also, I would, I mean, I wrote only like a laptop and uh, something sound oriented, but it's not necessarily only with sound. As I was, as I just said, um, why don't we do a, like a you know, series of photos mm -hmm. and like put some sound on the top, or like a knock even not doing anything with sound. Mm -hmm. Because in the, um, the past workshop or like the seminars I've been doing, some students are, you know, from, from architecture study or from uh, visual communication or very different background. Mm -hmm. And those people have yeah, very different perspectives than the sound people and that they are great. And mm -hmm. some people should benefit that. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. The, the, uh, you mentioned observation. It, it's going to be quite uh, challenging, but at the same time, fascinating uh, practice because I'm sure uh, most participants uh, are from Aberdeen, uh, near Aberdeen, and they, they well, we should say, we, we think that we know Aberdeen well. So, uh, it's, you know, it's, uh, uh, having, a, having a fresh uh, eyes and ears uh, is going to be quite a challenging thing to do, but at the same time, uh, I think this. That makes uh, this workshop interesting, isn't it? Great. Yeah, I, I will be enjoying being an alien, you know. Yeah, okay. Yeah, on to the next one. Um, so just to say, well, ahead of the... I know you've spoken a little bit about how um, there'll be... So there'll be the workshop and then there'll be a performance where there's a chance to kind of show some of the experiments, some of the collaborative work that's gone on in and around Peacock. Um, and also you mentioned Maya. So Maya Zeko is a sound artist who will also be in the workshop, and uh, she's got so she's been preparing for the performance with kind of like um, something body, like a kind of embodied um, sound uh -huh. thing. Um, but I also just wanted to mention that she will be you, you and Maya, and um, also we've invited um, Dr. Robert Housel to speak about um, sound's relationship to place. Um, and you know, I think you kind of emphasize quite well that it, it's about you know developing a concept or an idea for a work in relation to the context and being kind of open to that. So, but I wondered if you know you could say a little bit more about this this idea of sound and place and this relationship that you know the place has on a work. Yeah, um, I like to position myself a little different than the you know, um, the long term long time discourses around like soundscape. Mm -hmm. Like how to hmm, like a defining the sound good or bad, I mean or or like analyzing sites as more like scientific way or uh, yeah, different methods available I right know, like sociology and also, you know, sonically um, I, I think that um, I like to understand as a practitioner mm -hmm. more like how to approach to that kind of uh, um, condition and it, there is a lot of different kind of conditions available of course in Aberdeen for example or in Berlin it would be very different 
Um, but more, I mean, uh, focus focusing on pra- practice meaning that what is then an artist can do with it. Uh, I don't. Uh, yes, it'll be challenging, but it'll be quite interesting and uh, interesting uh, workshop. No, you know, nonetheless. Hopefully, we have some support anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> right. Okay, great. Uh, uh, thank you so much for your time and uh, the speaking to us. And uh, we are very much looking forward to have you uh, to having you in Aberdeen next week. Yes, I'm very excited. Can't <laughs> wait. Okay, bye-bye. Take care. Bye. Okay.